In this video, we're going to talk about Lucent Motors, trading under the ticker symbol LCID. We're going to cover the price action over the past few days, the company itself, and the recommendations regarding buying, holding, or selling the shares. If you would like to see more stock analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. But before today's video begins, I'd just like to clarify a few things about the timing when my videos are recorded, uploaded, and how much they react to the latest market updates. Those are prepared, recorded on the day before and scheduled for the next day. If there are significant and volatile movements during the trading day, they will not be reflected in the video itself. With that being said, to the extent possible, my analysis will be based on the medium term or even the long term and not necessarily on the intraday movements. The main reason why it shouldn't matter that much is because most people investing in stocks or even just trading in and out of their positions usually keep their positions open for at least a few weeks. With that being said, if there are significant movements in the stock price that happens afterwards, Either they will not affect the overall picture, so in that case, we will cover them the next time we're supposed to cover them, or if they are significant enough that they change the outlooks, then yes, I will do a follow-up video in the shortest delay possible with a re-evaluation of what I think should happen next. Lucid Motors is a startup based in Newark, California. It manufactures electric vehicles and specifically targets the high-end segment of the market. The main appeal of Lucid is that it is based in the US, is widely considered as a potential rival and an alternative to Tesla. This means that the market participants who want to either hedge their exposure in Tesla and those who believe in the sector of EVs may consider investing in Lucid. Another appeal for the investors is that unlike their EV startups, such as NEO. Lucid is based and operates in the United States, so there will be little to no worry about the effect of remote oversight and geopolitical tensions. The recent catalysts have been focusing on the release of Lucid Air, a widely acclaimed vehicle from the critics, and may provide the company the capital to keep growing at a fast pace. The market cap of Lucid Motors is currently at $62 billion, and the enterprise value is at $26.27 billion. The market cap is the price tag the financial market is willing to evaluate Lucent Motors at with consideration to its future potentials and the short-term fundamentals. The enterprise value or EV of the company is the net result of the company's assets when all the debts are paid off. Usually the market cap is higher than the EV, but sometimes there are exceptions because the company may be highly leveraged, or the company may be under a lot of selling pressures. The quick ratio of Lucent Motors is 18.28. The current ratio is also 18.28, and the debt over equity is 0.04. The average trading volume of Lucent Motors has been 82.6 million shares, and the daily volumes have been 89 million shares, 120.9 million shares, and 50.1 million shares. The one-year beta of Lucent Motors is 1.72. Its 52-week high is $64.86. Its 52-week low has been $9.90. Now, let's also talk about the options market for Lucent Motors. In terms of volume and open interest, the options market seem to favor the call side. Generally speaking, the put options mean that the market expects a pullback, and the calls options mean that the market expects the prices to move up. The key strike prices where there seems to be the most interest are $38, $40, and $41. Lucid recently had an amazing run in the financial market because of Lucid Air and the great reviews it had. This is a major catalyst for the company, which went beyond the drawing board and allowed investors to put a lot more additional trust, or shall I say, to put back a lot of additional trust they used to have in a company back in Lucid. 
Now that we seem to be definitely moving away from the previous sequence of events where Lucid was just trading above $10. With that being said, there is a significant difference between where the narrative is and where you should buy the stock at, or whether you should buy the stock, and if so, when. What I mean by this is that as of now, Lucid has been going through a significant pullback that frankly should be predictable as soon as the stock price surged. Because many shareholders have been holding up the bag for the better part of the year after the massive sell-off we had back in March. Many people were waiting for an opportunity like this to unwind some of their existing exposure. Like I said before, if there is one lesson to be learned from the whole Lucid situation is that we definitely have to make sure that we should have a balanced exposure in different stocks regardless of how compelling they may seem to be. Another reason is because recently, Lucid offered a $1.75 billion worth of convertible senior notes to institutional investors. Another way to say it is that shareholders are being diluted, as debt holders would have the option to exchange those debt for Lucid Motors shares. Obviously, shareholders reacted to this news negatively, but this, in my opinion, is a short-term reaction. In the long term, there will be a recovery, which may be fast or slow, depending on the market sentiment. I believe that we are at a stage where the stock can be entered because of the recent slip, so that our cost base can be relatively I believe that we are at a stage where the stock can be entered because of the recent slip so that our cost basis can be relatively low. With that being said, there is no way to predict with certainty the short-term price fluctuations, so we always have to keep in mind about this possibility. With that being said, of course, there is no way to predict the short-term price fluctuations, so we always have to keep the scenario in our mind. My recommendation is to keep your exposure between 3 to 5% of your portfolio and buy 30% to 50% of your allocation now. In this current market environment, I believe that we should be careful about taking positions and risk in the financial market in general and in the equity market in particular. Because over the past decade or so, the financial market has been living with the help of newly created capital from QEs, resulting in a massive increase of asset prices and the corresponding decrease in their yields. And the low interest rate also contributed to reinforce this phenomenon because the financial sector would see its profit margins reduced and in turn keeps the returns of other sectors and employees low as well. At the same time, the market doesn't represent the real economy and the real economy doesn't get reflected in the price of different securities. The market is a game of supply and demand, which will depend on a number of factors, not just the fundamentals. If the asset prices only depend on the fundamentals, then their performances in the Northern Hemisphere would have been more than mediocre, because things have been mostly stagnant over the years. A few things can explain why asset prices managed to remain high despite the stagnation of the underlying businesses. The first one is that over the years, there has been more money printed by different central banks to support their own economies. But because that money is distributed to banks and expected to loan to businesses to create more jobs, and that in fact there aren't that many opportunities out there, this money became capital that travels around the world and went into the huge financial melting pot. The QEs are now wrapping up in many countries, so I don't think that it'll remain as the main driving force over the next couple of years to keep the asset prices up. But it's compensated by the arrival of new capital from different regions to North America because it's perceived as a safe haven for investors. With the rising tensions around the world, this capital inflow will probably be sustained 
over the next couple of years, if not intensifying. The last phenomenon is the creation of artificial bubbles that are either supported by real market trends or completely fictional ones to allow market participants to play the game of hot potato and to either create profits or to safe keep their capital. The EV sector back in 2020 is an excellent example of this. But nevertheless, what it means for the market is that the degree of uncertainty is probably going to increase over the foreseeable future as the expectation for a recession has been building up for more than a decade and that the economic difficulties are accumulating around the world, especially from Asia. What this means for the market and for us is that the volatility is supposed to increase over time, which will provide opportunities to make a profit or to incur losses, depending on the timing and risk management. Another thing to note for this period of time is that we have to be very careful about having shorts. It's already riskier than having longs because the losses of shorts are not limited, right? Because there's no limit in terms of how far the stock can increase. But with the increased involvement of short sellers, I believe that the stocks been shorted will have an even higher probability of getting squeezed, which will result in potentially massive losses. So we're also like observing more of an irrational behavior from market participants in the sense that very often people will choose to rush in a position not necessarily because the fundamentals are convincing, but because there's a buildup of demand in a specific stock and people will pile in to ride the gravy train with the rest of us. That kind of behavior is highly risky and may result in losses. It's worth pointing out that in 2020 and probably in 2021, the market has never presented that many opportunities. But it was also during that same period of time that many retail traders have incurred their biggest losses. A rule of thumb is that each position should be structured so that even if they don't succeed, they don't impact the portfolio stability. Positions should begin small so that there is an opportunity to average down later. And specifically for the growth stocks, I think that 5 to 10% overall should be a healthy weight for the portfolio. And each stock should represent about 1 to like 3% of the positions. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.